Oh, hello everyone. Um, it's me again, doing a bit more line and wash for you. Um, I hope you've had a look at my previous videos, which explain materials and things and different ways of using line and wash. Um, so today, moving on to something slightly bigger, something a more, bit more complete. Um, and I'll probably be doing this in stages, so you can take your time, different videos. Um, a line and wash, which is based on this beautiful scene um, in the Lake District. We're lucky enough to have friends that live up in Cumbria. And this scene, this photograph, is a place called Blee, Blee Tarn House, which is Little Langdale, which is in Cumbria. Um, very popular with walkers and much photographed and much painted as well. Uh, if you research it online, you'll probably find loads and loads of paintings based on this particular location. Um, very beautiful all year round, obviously very different according to the seasons. This one looks pretty much like um, a summer picture or maybe towards late summer or, or a dry summer. Um, very beautiful scene. So how would we translate this into line and wash? So I've got my colour photo here. Remember you don't have to stick exactly to the same colours if that's what you don't want. You can go anywhere with your imagination. Um, you could change the time of year if you wanted to. Give that a go, you know, to try and do it in springtime or even in the winter. I know that takes a little bit of imagination if you're not used to painting. But, you know, for now we'll stick to this scene. The other thing I like to do, whatever I'm painting, or whether I'm doing line on wash or drawing, is print myself out a black and white copy to show you the tones. So maybe not quite so important in a line on wash um, as some other painting. But anyway, it's nice to have this printed out, grayscale sort of black and white type copy. So you've got it there, you can see the tones much more clearly than if you look at a colour copy. So there we go. Okay, so if you are not that practised at drawing, you might not want to go straight in with your pen. Obviously, you know, you can't really rub it out. It's not easy to get rid of the pen mark once you put it down. It can be part of your final piece I mean it, it can look very lively if you just let the pen go for a walk you make a mistake um, you just go back and do that line again and that can give you a very exciting and quite kind of lively outcome to your painting but if you're not that confident you know start simply and start by doing a pencil drawing um, if you're in the studio or on your kitchen table wherever you can take your time you can do a, a pencil drawing first you know, if you're actually sitting there looking at the scene, you might need to be a bit quicker and just, just go for it. So I've done a pencil drawing. I hope you can see that because it's quite pale. I didn't want to make the lines too dark. Um, although, you know, we can go over it with pen and then rub out the pencil lines afterwards. But I hope you can see that. Um, I've made it a little bit bigger than this one. If you really are put off by drawing and you just want to get in there, use some paint. I see nothing wrong with tracing this off, you know. Trace it off. If it gets you going, it gets you into painting. If, if you're stuck over that initial drawing, you know, it may just be a barrier that's really hard to get over. So, um, you know, trace it off to start with. When you're tracing, think about the angles, think about the proportions and the perspective if you can. You know, even while you're tracing, think about that. And I find it, well, in the past, I found it helped me. So here's the pencil drawing. Um, for this, I'm going to go over with wet washes. So I don't really want to use a water-soluble pen, pen. I want to use a waterproof pen this time. We've looked at these in a previous video. So you could go with either using a pen like this with the fiber tip, like the Faber Castell pen. You might want to use the dip pen with a waterproof ink. 
you look back to video one where I, I talked about this kind of thing. Um, the dip pen gives me, I think, more interesting lines. It can be a bit more difficult, um, a bit tricky. You can get a little bit of flooding sometimes of the pen nib. Um, but it's great. It just, you know, try it out first. Have a bit of practice with it, maybe, if you want to use it before going into a, something bigger like this. So once you've got your pencil drawing, you can then just start to go over your lines. Now I prefer a slightly broken line as opposed to a, a solid line. I think it's a bit more interesting, but up to you how you do that. Starting to fill in some of these lines. There's some grass going on. I'll smooth this over a bit so you can see that a bit more. There's a hill with some, hill with some grasses going on here. So I'm kind of letting the pen take a walk, as I like to call it. A little bit of a broken line there. Let's put a little bit of that chimney in. Now, if there's something you don't like about your pencil line, you can correct it at this point. Um, if you think your pencil line's slightly out somewhere, you can actually go over it with your pen, correct it, and then rub the pencil line out afterwards. I think go fairly quickly. If you want kind of a lively looking painting, don't be too careful. You know, don't make every single line. In fact, if you if you make every line perfect on an old building like this, it just won't look right. You know, it might be fine if you're trying to paint the Shard in London or something, something very modern. But for something like this, a little wonkiness. You don't need too much detail. Now the other thing I could use, as I said, is the dip pen. This is the waterproof calligraphy ink. On my dip pen. You have to make sure your pen isn't too overloaded with ink in case it floods. There's a little bit of a bubble on top there but that's fine. Now you can make these nice scratchy marks. As you can see if I press harder they get a thicker line. If I'm quite light I get a finer line. So maybe a little bit more interesting than using the fibre tip pen. I find this, you know, a bit more interesting, personally. Not supportable, as I was saying in a previous video, you know, if you're going out and painting outdoors, not so easy to bring the dip pen with you and the ink. You can see that that, pet, that ink lasted quite a long time there on the nib before I had to re-dip it. And so and so on and so forth. Um, I won't draw the whole thing out for you. Um, when it comes to shadow and things, now you can either decide you want to put this in with your pen, or you can decide you want to do that when you put your watercolour washes on and do that with your watercolour. So up to you, really, where you go with that. Okay. Put a little bit of shading in there. When it comes to trees, okay, so many different ways to do it. You could get another piece of paper. You could do this kind of thing, put in the foliage. Make lots of marks. And then afterwards, you know, give it a fine wash. On the other hand, you don't have to put anything in. If you don't want to, you could just fill the tree in, mostly using your watercolour. Or you could just maybe suggest a few branches.
just the edge and uh, do the rest with your watercolours. And you see I made a slight mistake there with the line, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's just put the correct line in for the top of that shed. You can see it there. Keeps it a little bit of liveliness, I think, you know. Something like that you might consider a mistake, but does it really matter? And so on. I wouldn't put in too much detail when it comes to the hills at the back here. Because of sort of aerial perspective. You don't want these trees to, uh, sorry, these hills to kind of jump forward. So let's just put in some sort of very faint lines there. And we could put a very pale wash on there. Sorry, I'm having to reach here because uh, I'm trying to put my hand in front of the camera. Because that's in your way. That's a little bit tricky, but anyway. You get the point, I hope. Okay, so now we just carry on filling this in. So we could switch back to the pit pan. I'm using sepia here, by the way, not black. Um, some people like black because they like the boldness of the lines and the edges. Um, I quite like sepia. It's a little softer. Um, again, personal preference, I suppose. So anyway, hopefully you get the point of where we're going with this. And uh, I'm not going to put too much detail in, as I say. Finish going over this, doing all the lines, and then I'll come back to you for the next stage. Thank you. I hope you're going to have a go at that. As they always say, please subscribe. Um, if you subscribe here on my YouTube channel, it just means that, you know, more people are likely to come and have a watch. So it kind of spreads the word. And you can also see things and see some of my work at www.cbradleyart.co.uk. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye.